So many importers and brands have this idea that C marking is, is it's all about obtaining some sort of certificate and then they are done. The truth is that C-marked products don't really require a certificate, at least not in all cases. Yes, I know there's the examination, um, the EC examination certificate that, that is a requirement if it concerns, say, some PPE and medical devices that must be reviewed by notified body. But most products that are C-marked are, let's say that that process is entirely self-managed in the sense that it's up to the importer or the, the manufacturer, the brand owner, to create a declaration of conformity. This is a self-issued document, technical documentation, user instructions and so on, and then print the C mark on the product and the packaging, okay? So it's not really about obtaining a certificate. Nonetheless, it's very common that when you contact a supplier outside the EU, I don't want to go specifically into certain countries and so on, but what often happens is that they say, yeah, sure, it's, it's compliant C certified, uh, which is often a bogus term to begin with. And, and what you get is not proper C marking documentation, which would be technical documentation that would be the declaration of conformity and a and, uh, proper verifiable test report, but in many cases what you receive is 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 the a PDF file that says CE certificate of conformity or certificate of compliance or attestation of conformity or, or, or something like that issued by some mysterious company somewhere. Okay. And and these documents state that okay so this product is SKU sometimes they mention like 20 different products on, on the same document. Um, is compliant with this or that regulation and, and, and this and that directive or and these these uh, EN standards that well tend to be harmonized. But the little problem is that these certificates are often not backed by anything. OK, what often happens when you take the next step, meaning, OK, so you issued a certificate. So I guess you have some sort of test report or some sort of documentation that would actually support this. Well, you're going to find out quickly that what they have is often just that. They just have this PDF file, okay? That doesn't make a product C-marked. It doesn't, it's not sufficient. It's not enough to affix the C-mark on a product, okay? Just because they are sending you this, this, this certificate that often doesn't actually have any, any, any value, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you can go around the, the regulatory requirements, which is that if you're the brand owner, if it's a custom design product, you have the obligations of a manufacturer to draw up a declaration of conformity. You need to obtain or create the, the technical documentation. You need to have a user instruction. You need to have proper information, meaning labeling uh, compliance on the packaging and the product. We're talking traceability, um, seller information, model numbers, and, and, and so on and so on. All of this information you can find in that directive. Nonetheless, many importers, Amazon sellers and brands, they have this idea, if I receive this CE certificate of, of conformity, then I'm absolved of all these requirements. And that's just not the way it works. It can be very deceptive. And I sure wish it was that easy, you know, if it was just all you had to do is to get this nice looking official looking PDF, you know, and you're done, that'd be great. But that's just not how it is. Now, the thing is that let's say that you actually go ahead and you buy a product on the basis of having received these CE certificates of conformity, you don't bother with labeling, well, maybe they got the CE mark printed. Um, but you don't have technical documentation, you don't have a DOC, you don't have, a, you don't have user instructions drawn up and all that stuff, which is required for CE compliance. Well, what's going to happen is that if you import that product, could be an electronic device, could be a toy, for example, right? Well, market surveillance authorities can issue a recall at any time. And I've, dealt with, I've seen many cases like that. What they often do is that they impose a sales ban. The first thing that market surveillance authorities in, in EU countries tend to do is to ask you for two things. Lab test reports valid for that same product and a declaration of conformity. My understanding is that they rarely go to the point where they request technical documentation because they, 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 they tend to understand that that technical documentation can uh, contain valuable IP. but 
they do request the declaration of conformity and a test report. Now, let's say that you are in a scenario where you get a request like this and you give them a certificate of conformity that's not actually supported by anything. Well, they're not going to accept that. And you're going to find out because what's going to happen is that they will slap you with a sales ban and they could force a recall. Means that you get fined if, if, you, if you keep selling that product, you get fined. And you may even have to buy back the product because it's not actually tested. It might be unsafe, okay? But let's say that you're in a, in a highly theoretical scenario when, okay, so a supplier has a CE, CE certificate. I mean, they can call it whatever they want. Um, that's, again, issued by some dubious company that you've never heard of. Well, okay, you could still go through the compliance procedure, but you wouldn't really be using this document. It is not an EC examination type certificate. That's, that's a completely different thing. That's a completely different thing. So, yeah, in any case, what this really comes down to is that there's a lot of these weird CE certificates. And, and, and I think, you know, if you ask me, I think a lot of these suppliers, you know, in, uh, yeah, here in Asia, they don't really understand this stuff, you know. They, they might think, and they're helping you that this certificate is what they need you know I, I think many of these suppliers don't even know and in all honesty why should they that that's your job right uh, because if you are selling in the eu it's up to you to make sure that you're compliant in the eu you can't really expect that from from a supplier in mainland china or vietnam or india or honestly anywhere outside of the eu and i also want to mention that uh, this topic was also uh, brought up uh, in the early COVID days, when there was this frenzy of, of unsafe medical devices, you probably remember that. We're talking March, April 2020, the dark ages, when very large quantities of medical supplies came into the European Union, often based on, on, on bogus documentation. And actually, I'm going to Google that. So I think... I think this was, this is a report, you can Google this yourself, uh, by uh, the European Safety Federation. So just search um, suspicious certificates for PPE, European Safety Federation, and, and you will find a lot of, well, you, they, they really dig deep into, into what they have found. Uh, and they also mention, mention some of the companies that at least they claim uh, might be issuing uh, documents that, that, that are actually invalid. End of the day is your responsibility. The problem with these documents is that they can be deceptive. They often look very official. They look trustworthy. But Amazon, they don't buy it. They don't accept that. Market surveillance authorities will not even consider it. So that's that. Anyway, if you want to learn more about product compliance and you can subscribe or you can also write a comment on our website or directly on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.